Good morning. Happy Sunday. Welcome back to the Church of Killing. It's time for another episode of Roleplay Blades. Um, it's been a week. This has actually kind of been irregular for us, but uh, it's nice to be back with some uh, continuity in uh, in the story, and I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I know we'll get to the, the show in just a second. So, uh, Anne, you moved. I'm going right to you because I've, I'm sort of feeling this renewed, like, yes, I did it. And and are you there? Are you? Did you no. achieve that? <laughs> no? No. no, for this, I got home at like two o'clock in the morning because my flight yesterday was delayed like two hours. Um, so I'm exhausted. That's why, again, the reason for the no makeup and no people are going to ask. Um, I started putting my bed together, which I just got while I was it got here while I was gone. And there's like screws missing. So I'm going to have to go to the, I, I got it like halfway put together and then realize that there's screws missing from the package. So I have to like go to the hardware store. Get Do you want right- to do you want to part shame uh, whoever that is? Wayfair. Yeah. Wayfair. Wow. The packaging is shit. Okay. It's like the it's like that cardboard that falls apart when you touch it. You oh. know, and I feel like actual- missing a part is unforgivable. I agree. It's just I, I, like it's it yeah. has to be the well, worst. The it's got to be so it's frustrating like, not to be able to screw in your bed. Yeah, I mean, like, screws, it's like I can just go to the hardware store. If it were missing, like, an actual, like, big piece or whatever, then that would be really shitty. But, um, yeah. but yeah, so, uh, what are you doing? Stop. Um, so, yeah, so, and it's, like, that cardboard that just falls apart, and it's, like, this, the styrofoam that just, like, breaks and, like, leaves little pieces of styrofoam everywhere. So it's just been, like, a mess this whole morning, and nothing is... I, I haven't done anything because I got back at 2 a.m., so there's still, like, so much shit to do that I have not made any time for. So mm. I so You're am, getting there. I know, yeah. <laughs> at least I can stream, but... That's good. Yeah. And, it, and it, has it just been that? That's been your life? Yeah, pretty much. All right. Uh, so you... I went to the Destiny 2 thing. That was cool. Oh. Uh, yeah, was I got the... What was that? The event was... <laughs> Damn. Hater. Did you go or... <laughs> Whoa! I did go. No, I, I did go. Did you go? I mean, yeah. I'm not just asking if you were there because you seem like you know... I don't, you I'm a hater that. of Destiny, and I just hate all things Destiny. Oh, I think. Well, I mean, I hated the first game. I was super vocal about hating the first game, but I wanted to try it out at least, you know, just like see what they had. The event was cool. There were a lot more people there than I expected. Um, Did I, any, was any of it on PC, and Because I know that was a big part of the you know, announcement and something everyone's excited for. Did you play it on PC? Yeah. Yeah, I played like the first mission that they showed in the announcement thing. Um yeah, it was, I mean, it felt good to play Destiny on PC because any FPS, in my opinion, is better on PC. Um, so I, I liked that part of it, but I do think that it is still more of the same, like, cover shooter kind of right. thing where you're just, like, running around shooting at enemies that just stand there and it seems pretty much like the same, you know, like Gears of War and Halo where you just kind of, like, run at enemy, shoot enemy, shoot enemy, shoot enemy, proceed to next level, you know, it's like... So I don't, I don't know. Funny and it's just, it's all hip fire, like. Right. Grind. Yeah. So I, I don't know that I'm like super, like really, really excited for it after the event. I was nice to play it on PC, but it, I feel like it's kind of the same. As yeah. Before. That's what it looks like from the outside. Right. Kind of boring. I'm super excited for it because I love Destiny 1. I played many, many hours of Destiny yeah, 1. I think it'll be good for people who really were into the original Destiny, but for me, I, I don't think it was enough to like convince me that it was going to be something to pull me away from Overwatch and Siege. Right. Yeah. Well, and don't get me wrong. Like, I'm not, I'm not planning on playing this online, or, like on my stream at all. It's all gonna, <laughs> it's all gonna be off stream. Did, shit, you, did you play Destiny on yeah. your stream? Because I don't remember you. Ever, no, I, I don't remember. Probably like two or three streams of Destiny, maybe like when it first came out and a couple of I streamed a couple of raids, but the lion's share of what I played was completely offline. Just me like after a broadcast like Cheetos, Mountain Dew, and I'm just like, eh, grind, grind, <laughs> grind. Oh my God. If it like a feeder bar, man. It was like a rat at the feeder bar. I was like, give me my feed. Right. Yeah. I think I, I mean I probably would play like the campaign because I I liked the first campaign I played, but 
I don't, the multiplayer is not my thing. Yeah, it's. Uh, I know a lot of people are excited, okay. but it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, the design is really cool. That's why I was super excited about the first one. I like the the kind of aesthetic of Destiny, but just the gameplay isn't enough to entertain me. Mm -hmm. so. Zeke, how about you? How uh, how are things? Things are good. I turned a year older yesterday. Happy oh, birthday. Oh, happy. Nice. Happy wow. birthday. Zeke, let's talk. Uh, let's keep, though. Where's the mustache? Did the, did you give him the <laughs> pressure? <laughs> no, it's here's here's the thing. It's not it's not due to any pressure or anything. I just I kept the mustache mostly as a lark. I had it mostly as a lark. But uh, the reason why I shave it and the reason why I usually don't keep a mustache, even if I have other facial hair, is because I can't fucking stand eating with it. Mm. I cannot like drinking anything and it just gets in there and you got to do that, that to get it off of there and shit. It's just, it's annoying. So, I mean, I would have kept it if I, you know, if that wasn't the case, because it looked pretty, pretty debonair, if I must say. <laughs> Zeke, uh, I just want to say I've, I've seen a little, a bit of the footage from, uh, where the mustache came from and let me just say <laughs> you have have you i, I have uh, no idea what you're talking about i laughed my ass off let me just say <laughs> good 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 yeah i guess for people that aren't in the know uh zeke recently filmed a porno and it's actually something that uh dj weed checked out so that's that why was i was laughing about it jeff that's exactly right there's the reason i mean that's the whole reason for the stash we're like we want to have you in this porno but is there any way you could make it you sleaze it up a little like your face? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. I've got just the thing. Well, it was a throwback to a 70s, you know, classic. Yeah, vintage. Oh, totally. No, I dressed up like uh, like Ned Flanders. And I, and I was like, oh, you want to suck my diddly doodly, huh? Wow. <laughs> wow. You took that further than I was ready to go. I know. Uh, oh. But no, yesterday was my birthday. But I also we also did a. a charity for St. Jude. We did the, that's why I was playing Overwatch for the first time in six months because uh, that's what, that's what uh, trade chat who I was doing the charity stream with. She's a, you know, blizzard fanatic. So she's like, I got all blizzard games. I was like, oh, all I have is Overwatch. She's like, okay. Yay. And I'm like, mm, okay. any, any tattoos or any? Awesome no, we, we did, uh, she uh, got her, we got her total up to 40,000, though, for the month. So oh, that's like, pretty sweet. Wow. Yeah. Like super awesome. sweet. Yeah, yeah, she goes in, man. She's she's really, really, like, deep into the St. Jude fundraising stuff. Nice. Well yeah. done. So. That's, I've, and I, the, I've done that for the last three years. Like, on my birthday, I do, like, some sort of charity thing. Cool. I like it. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, John, sir, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I, uh, just like you and Ann, I am gearing up to move. Uh, oh, damn. Don't it's know. Club. Great. It's all like the best. I can't wait. <laughs> Moving is so fun. <laughs> I hope it goes well for you. Thank you. Uh, the yeah. parts, things that you order arrive. Yeah. That would be nice. I, I would <laughs> With actually all the pieces. I yeah. was looking at a bed on that website, actually. Uh, <laughs> I will. I'll think about that. Well. Um, no, it's good, though. I, I Hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, I, we found the perfect place. And this Tuesday, we'll find out if it's going to happen or not. But um, Oh, so it, you're on, you're it, like, you've looked at a place, you like it, you're trying to get it, and you're at yeah, that point? Oh, at that point at I'm the, sorry, dude. It's That's like, like ninety nine percent point, but not a hundred, and so it, I can't be like, okay, it's over. You know, we got it. Like, it's, it's like perpetually being the night before Christmas. Yep, exactly. All the time. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. But I, 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 I think it'll go fine, and everything will work out, and the location's great. So I'm, I'm really excited to, to be in the new place. But I am not excited to move to the new place. So. <laughs> Are you, uh, will you go through the phase of just being like, oh, we're moving. What can I toss out? Oh, definitely. Oh, my God. I, I, th this is the move for me where my paperbacks and my comics are up on the chopping block. Like, 
I've I've moved them several times now. The last when I moved into this place, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I have way too many books, way too many comics, and I just I I, I got to get rid of them. They have to they have to find new homes and get out of here because should do I'm a not. fat lot auction with <laughs> yeah. the role play community. I'm sure oh, that idea. Yeah, yeah. Somebody wants the the awesome. Frank Miller, Daredevil, Seer Run. Right, I've got that. Just hit me up. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm getting rid of all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's uh, it's it's good, but I know how how hard it is. How hard yeah, that is. Yeah. yeah, it's it's really annoying. But I've been I've been wanting to move out of this neighborhood and over to Capitol Hill in Seattle. If you guys know the city at all, that's where I went to school, man. There you go. There you go. O'Day uh, High School. I'm over. I'm in the U district now, so I'm at near near UW campus. I'll be moving to a near a different campus. Um, so that'll be good. I was just waiting for Jeff to say something like, "Oh yeah, I went there. Go fighting crows." <laughs> no, it's a really nice area. But uh, I remember my first day of school, we were in lockdown because the mental hospital that's up there had a guy break out, grab a shotgun out of a cop car, and then go on a rampage. <laughs> It's a really nice area. It, yeah, yeah, that's what you want. It's right by Johnson's new place. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm more alarmed by like the escaped mental patient or the like police officer who doesn't secure his weapons in his car. Yeah. Or the fact that they have a school next to the mental hospital. That, <laughs> Dude, that too. It's, it's it a made weird so town. Funny. Oh my god. <laughs> it's it, it's on a completely different wing of the building. Uh, so I wouldn't worry yeah. about it. <laughs> the fucking freshman football team's bus, like it's so old that the, it couldn't lock up. So homeless people just slept in there, peed and defecated. And part of the job of like, if you if you're in the shit, if you were in trouble, your job was to clean that bus before and after. Uh, and wow, you know, that, there's there's an actual term for that. Yuck. Like when when you when you go out and you see that bums have have slept in your vehicle, it's called a soup kitchen. Wow, I'm not kidding. It's, there's an actual fucking term for that because it happens a lot. Yeah, that's not that's not good. We'll do story time sometime. I've got I've got some good ones. There's some conversations of like walking up to school at 6 a.m. and having five homeless people be like, "Yo," and I'm like, "Well, my day just started off great." <laughs> Uh, so I've been forward to. Uh, yeah, well, good luck. Yeah, good luck. I hope you get your place sooner <laughs> than later. Happy note. <laughs> hope you enjoy your new home. <laughs> Watch out for the killers. Yeah. Uh, well, I gotta Jeff, say, your voice sounds so much better this week. Well, it's because I'm not on a fucking snowball on Wi-Fi. <laughs> you know, sitting in the corner. Yeah. I'm it just, I'm just, too. I'm just sitting here like ASMR, just like, ah, oh, thank you. Yeah, there's no yeah. popping anymore. No, like beep, beep, or whatever the <laughs> fuck alien noise was trying to be transmitted through my shit last week. Uh, Jeff, Jeffrey. What's up? I'm going to tell two stories from high school, actually, for my whole, how am I doing? Okay. Because inner city high school is really, really funny. First one, we were in a baseball game playing inner city, uh, downtown Seattle. And uh, our outfield had no fence, and it, and just it was like a big giant. If you hit a home run, it was like a 900 footer or something like that, because you just literally couldn't run it down. Um, we were playing a game. Uh, opposing team batter hits the ball like deep right. My my friend and the running back of our team goes to like run it down, stops, and then stares because the ball had rolled up on two homeless people that were bare ass naked having sex in the field, deep right field. And it was right next to him, too. Like, right next to him. And literally, the guy that hit this ball stops. The whole field, everyone's laughing. And uh, then they all started yelling, go get it. You have to get the ball. Long story short, he did not go get the ball. Uh, oh, oh and, and, that's, and that's public school, so they only got one baseball. So baseball was fucking canceled for the rest of the fucking season. No, it was good. Um, oh, who's the other one I was going to tell? Oh, and then another one. It's baseball related. Another baseball game, Inner City. <laughs> there was, there was like twelve homeless people that filled out the bleachers in this game. It was a midday game, so nobody was there to watch except for homeless people. And they had like a drum thing going, and they're playing their stuff. 
and they're hanging out. And I went over to him uh, <laughs> and I said, this is, I'm not super proud of this, but it is really funny. I was in high school, by the way. I, I told them I would give them each uh, a dollar, which I did do, <laughs> if they would heckle the other team <laughs> every time they went up to bat. And they fucking, <laughs> they thought it was funny. Obviously, they weren't like dying for a dollar, but they just, they actually went so ham that I, I had to get, <laughs> I was in some trouble afterwards because <gasps> the kids, the other team was like from this company. <laughs> school that You're going like, too kids. far. They were like, You're going too the far. Fence, screaming. <laughs> just, it was amazing. They went really ham on that, and it, it <laughs> afterwards they were like, they they like they like deconstructed what had happened. We we're like Jeff talked to him. They went crazy. Oh, okay, Jeff's the problem, and then like I had to get pulled into the office and talk to him. About it. You're such an asshole. It explains so I didn't, much. I, didn't, Jeff. I thought they were gonna, like you know, I thought they're gonna like hate him a little bit and be like you're bad at baseball. <laughs> they like started a small riot, and they just did not. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> They're reading, they're reading, but like last names on the jerseys, like, hey Ramirez, I'm gonna find out where you live. It was bad. It was bad. Uh, no, I'm excited to get the show going. Um, I've been really busy. I did a really funny thing. I went down to L.A. for a oh. gig on a Wednesday, and then I saw Alien Covenant on a Thursday, and then I had a cup of coffee with a guy on Friday, who uh, was talking about how he just got back from a bachelor party, and I was like, really on a Sunday night? That's weird. And he's like, it's Friday. I can't tell. So my weekend's been expanded because of how weird my, my week's been. But I went I'm ready. to a wall. And it further into the murder society of Blades. <laughs> nice. Awesome. All right. Well, then I'll be, I'll be short and sweet, but probably not. Uh, I am going to see Alien tonight. Mini Weed has opted out of it because he just said, you know, it's just not my thing. So uh, just gets- the wife and I. What's that? It gets pretty gory if you watch it. It'd be, it'd be kind of tough on the thing. I doubt, I doubt that. But, uh, you know, give him the option. I, <laughs> I mean. I don't. I don't. Yeah. Anyway. That, up for debate, up right? And I, like, okay. Logan is pretty. Uh, way worse than Logan. Well, you know. Logan, people get stabbed and they just gracefully disappear and probably come back totally fine later. In this movie. <laughs> An alien yeah. rips out of a guy's back into a in a birthing that's, sack, unfurls and stares at a woman's you know, face. Saw it in the other movies. Maybe he's just like, yeah, not my thing. So anyway, the the choice. That's it's important to give him the choice. Uh, but moving is all but complete. We have like maybe ten boxes. I have three right here that are filled with nothing but Blu-rays. Because I don't need those motherfuckers anymore. Jeff knows why. Oh my god! <laughs> it's all, it's all on the cloud now. Um, but yeah, it you feels. It shoots the cloud down. It feels really good to kind of have a, a a fucking computer again and a battle station and just the way I want it and uh, fuck. Can't explain how great that feeling is. Anyway, that's it. Oh, I got a Peloton bike. Got already convinced JP to 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 pick yeah. one up. I'm not. I'm not big. Sorry, this spoiler alert. But I I'm not big on the whole exercise thing. Right, my form of exercise is that I walk really heavy and fast. So I have this built in, you know, I I don't know, uh, sort of exercise. But uh, I've been riding on this bike. And it's uh, what it is, is it's just like a really nice adjustable cycle, lightweight. um, And it has a giant fucking screen on the front of it. And you log in with your account and there are all of these trainers and different styles of cycling, whether it be like uphill or downhill and uh, uh, weights or I don't think they can see you, Minnie. They just saw like an arm and probably thought I kidnap some of the kids so um and it's really great for someone who's like i don't have a a ton of time but uh i also don't want to like take the extra time to go to a gym um i'm really digging on this this thing and it's nice to actually have a trainer i've never done anything with a trainer before holy shit what a difference (laughs) like that can make whether they're virtual or not uh had no idea so here i am discovering um exercise and how to take care of myself a little bit better it's uh it's an interesting journey but uh 
Alexa, what? Marcus is exercising. <laughs> Jeff, hell has frozen over. She said sorry. <laughs> Yeah. She said sorry. She did? <laughs> I was yeah. thinking about getting one of those bikes, so it's cool to hear that you... Uh... A Peloton, yeah. 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 Does it have uh, a like, simulated city thing where you can be like, I want to bike around... Totally. ...the bay or whatever. And it, like, cool. Yes, simulates yes. The now, the, the thing is, is that all, the, all they're called just scenic rides, and they last a certain amount of time. However, they don't necessarily have programmed in rides but they do a good job simulating like i know i'm going uphill right now i know i'm going downhill mm -hmm. right now and i think through the normal classes you sort of learn how to adjust to what you're seeing like what resistance and then what cadence would be equivalent to like i'm going up this crazy grade hill or i'm going downhill so mm -hmm. after doing a bunch of those a scenic ride was way more effective when i would like adjust it based off of of what i was actually seeing um, and there are probably 150 different places that you can go little scenic cycles through. It's pretty, uh, wow. yeah, it's pretty cool. It's almost like you're really biking. That's cool. Almost, almost, you know, and the amount of time I save is ridiculous. So I love it. Uh, maybe not for everyone, but a multifamily home too. Really good. Cause you all have your own account and, uh, well, you I can really adjust it. And it gets like. I don't know. Sometimes I'm just like, man, maybe I don't feel like wearing a helmet, but then I will get hit by a car and probably have brain damage. And then also it's like 90 <laughs> degrees outside sometimes. So it's like, maybe I don't feel like going outside. Don't feel like getting hit by a car. Trying to yeah. find Avoid a route that, that has all bike paths. Also, there's a lot of hills and things and well, outdoors sucks. To so be if fair, I get yeah. Yeah, right. I think you can get hit by a car on that as well it's just a different it's just, you, you can like really feel you're like oh man it's extreme <laughs> hard to bike when you've been hit by a car guys another if i said if i said multi-family home i meant a multi-person home yeah it's like yeah guys we picked up three more families you know <laughs> it's like we 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 figured we had cats so what's you know what's the next logical step <laughs> anyway uh are we ready to so ready Ready? ready to rock and roll? All right. Back into the Blades action. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. Do it. Uh, previously on, John. Previously on Blades in the Dark. Mm -hmm. um, so things have been sort of bubbling, building, uh, in with two competing conspiracies that you guys have been uh, connected to yeah. um, in various ways. Not always like crystal clear ways, but... Uh, partially because Careless Farm is an enigmatic mofo, uh, and also just because the world is not always sharing its secrets with you. But in broad strokes, there's kind of two camps in the city that concern you guys. There's the kind of pro-demon side of things and the pro-ghost side of things, uh, and they're, they're fighting each other. So the, the pro-demon side of things being the Church of Ecstasy primarily, uh, and, and presumably any other kind of demon-summoning types uh, in town. I, I I don't know if Rune counts as one of those yet. I don't think so. I think she's kind of not yeah. on its team yet, necessarily. But uh, So, pro-demon side, Church of Ecstasy, versus pro-spirit side, mostly uh, represented by the path of Echoes, the people that think they can achieve immortality by becoming uh, reconciled ghosts that, that don't go crazy when they when they die. And, and the church thinking they can achieve immortality by changing into demon form from human form. So both of those have been going at a kind of a cold war for a long, long time, hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, trying to become ascendant and, and chart the course of humanity in the future, so to speak. And you guys have come into that, that battle, uh, mainly by the way that Careless recruited you guys and, and set you on this course of, of, of murder, ki killing key individuals in the city to kind of disrupt that whole, uh, the whole Cold War situation wrecked the status quo and presumably put the the demon side uh, up in the in the game. So last time we played, that all kind of came to a head to some degree, where Jeff, uh, in the previous session, two sessions ago, managed to get the sort of backing of the church behind him and uh, was sent on a mission or he created his own mission, kind of, to destroy the group that had infiltrated the church. The the spirit-loving guys, the the Path of Echoes, 
had infiltrated the church and at its, at its highest ranks and were corrupting it from within and, and messing up their practices and uh, trying to ruin their attempts to ascend to demonhood. So in the last session, you guys found their secret lair down below in the basement of the huge church cathedral and had a showdown with the kind of high priest, so to speak, of the, the pro-spirit cult. Preceptor Dunville is what he was going by in, as his church name. Um, Evil Jim Carrey, we call him sometimes because his picture kind of looked like that. Uh, and he he was ready. He lured you into a trap. He he had a special artifact that he was going to use to control Careless Firm and make him do what he wanted. And unfortunately, he did not count on the last word having a contingent of elite church knights, hollow knights uh, with him. And... Uh, the fact that Careless Firm can't necessarily be controlled by demon-controlling artifacts, it turns out. <laughs> uh, which, things things went poorly. And the last word, as they often do, uh, showed up and straight murdered all their enemies and wrecked them real bad. Uh, and on top of that, um, Ms. Cataby, our, our resident artifact-handling person, um, got a hold of this, this artifact that uh, Dunville was using, ho hoping to control demons with and another artifact as well which was hidden in the in the sanctum here a crystalline rocky heart-shaped artifact which had been used in some sort of ritual that the the, the use was unclear but Cadaby discovered it and has taken it into her possession so she has two of these ancient kotarian artifacts in her in her bag right now and that's that's where we left it uh we, we, we sort of wrapped it up semi-neatly with, with the, the murder of Dunville. Myth, I think, uh, <laughs> Careless had sort of promised that Myth was going to be the one to, to get the killing blow. So one of the last things we saw last week was Myth tearing Dunville limb from limb uh, very messily in the back corner of the room. <laughs> but then at the very end, the last moment, as, as Dunville died, his, his ghost spontaneously freed itself from its corpse, which is very unusual. It doesn't usually happen um, unless Rune is tearing them <laughs> out of bodies, <laughs> as, as she sometimes does. Um, his, his ghost and the ghosts of all the dead cultists all suddenly were freed from their corpses and flew up out through the top of the, of the room. Some magical thing occurred, and we left it on that note. So we're going to jump back in to the room. We're going to go back to the catacombs here and I've I've updated the map to kind of I cleared off the dead bodies they're still technically there in the room just to make it less confusing to look at um, it's the four of you myth uh, is the red circle here by rune and um, the eight church knights are still still in place um, wait one two three four five six seven. yeah there's still there's eight of them um, so as the as the episode starts, the title sequence finishes and the camera flies down back into the room just as the spirits are filtering up through the top of the vaulted ceiling, kind of with this echoing whooshing effect. Uh, one of the church knights there that are these tall, strangely tall, like seven feet tall suits of armor um, with with hollows inside, which are people whose whose ghosts have been removed. Um, we see one of the hollows straining at the controls for the port. There's two portcullises that have been closed to trap you inside the room. I don't know if you remember that, but mm -hmm. the, on the eastern side of the map there. Um, and one, one of the knights, who are quite large and strong, is straining to move the gears of this portcullis. It seems like it's been locked or something when, it, when they shut it. That some mechanism is holding it in place, and he's just essentially trying to brute force it and is making progress against the resistance of the metal. So it's great, uh, groaning and creaking, and the portcullis is shaking in its tracks. Uh, one of the one of the bars is bending slightly under his 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 weight, and then you hear a strange sound. You hear the sound of sloshing water from all around the room, and the the very dim, meager electroplasmic lighting in the room flickers momentarily and then snaps all the bulbs pop the room is uh dark 
the I, I described this last week. The the light from the the channel around the room has this electroplasmic infused black water or oil or something, um, and it casts that kind of swimming pool um, light effect all around the room. That starts to diminish. So all the light in the room starts to diminish. The the light coming from the water starts to get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, as if it's the electroplasm is sinking down through the layers of of black oil. And out of the corner of your eye, let's see, who's at the top of the room there? It's Careless and Aldo on <clears throat> the north side. You hear and, and feel like this sort of wet slapping noise. When you look off to the side, tendrils of black oil or water, ropey, watery ten- tentacles <clears throat> have wrapped around two of the dead cultist bodies and are dragging them into the, into the water. And as, as you look into the darkness, you see like one of their legs go over the edge and sploosh quietly into the into the oil there and all of you become aware of this you look into the darkness as the light starts to fade from the room the bodies start to be dragged back away into the dark uh there is some light uh anyone who wants to have a lantern can can ticket on your your items list to say that you have one on hand um for now as the light in the room is descending towards utter blackness you see Miss Caterby, it, your, you have your satchel uh, bag in which is the demon controlling relic that Dunville tried to use on Careless, <laughs> a kind of large metal uh, icon. And then also the crystalline heart is in there as well. Right. And the heart, the heart is emitting light very faintly, which you didn't really see so much before, but now that the room is getting dark, everyone can see this faint golden light coming out of your bag. But it's fading as well. Whatever whatever it was doing inside the pillar there, when when you took it out of the pillar, its magic, its its ritual, whatever the heart, it was doing something was beating inside this pillar. Since you've removed it, it's been slowly sort of fading away and turning off. <laughs> so you you get that sense um, that you get with artifacts that it's it's about to return to its inert state, but there's still a little bit of light shining from the from the heart. I think as this all happens, Careless kind of like looks at it and then looks back and looks towards Aldo and says, Aldo, I'm not sure, but I think it might be best if you help with that kindly knight over there and we get out of this room. Right. Roll up my <laughs> sleeves a little bit. I think you're ready to just wreck wreck the fucking door off. Yeah. Or the gate. You you have activated your not to be trifled with uh, from last time. This is This is kind of the same session same scene so i'm not going to make you re turn it back on again okay uh, since you guys haven't gotten your xp yet i'm not gonna i'm not gonna screw you <laughs> okay <laughs> so i don't know what's going on by the way does he recognize anything sorry <laughs> does careless know what is happening uh i don't think so um okay. if you want to if you want to make us st- can i check. Yeah, anybody who wants to study, if, if you think your character has background with this kind of stuff and would, like, recognize what's going on, or if you want to do some other way, you could attune, you could, you, you, you tell me, but if you want to, like, figure out what's going on, feel free to make a roll. I'd like to do an attune, because my study is only one. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's more of the rune way, right? You, like, reach into the ghost field and mm-hmm. feel. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study. I don't have anything in it, but I'm just, I'm not doing anything else because I'm waiting for all to smash the doors. So I'm just looking, I guess. Yeah. Everyone who wants to make the the roll can you essentially can if you want to roll study you can just like try to think of what's going on if you want to roll survey you can like just yeah. look and see what's what's up. I get a one. That's nothing. You got a one. The controlled standard. Uh, you're a tuning, so no. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's actually me. risky. It's risky and standard for you. Okay. You gotta attune to the energy here. Five. Whoa. It's, and a lot of ones. <laughs> the ones don't matter. I got a five. <laughs> um, yeah. So, t- t- get, paint, tell me, like, how how you do it. Like, are you attuning to the energy in the water and the then the weird tentacle things, or are you like, where where are you reaching out to attune? Yeah, the weird tentacle things. Tentacle things. Okay. The dead bodies. Okay. So the complication will be that. Uh, as you do that, and everyone sees this, like runes, I, I think your rune on your on your cheek uh, smokes and, and glows like it does, you know, when you use your powers. Uh, 
and you you see into the ghost field. You see a, a few interesting things actually. Um, you see the spiritual energy that of the ghost that went out the top of the building. <clears throat> it's not entirely dispersed. It's like some of them are are floating just up out of sight beyond the ceiling in, so, in a chamber up there, hanging and floating and waiting for something. As you look further up into the ghost field of the cathedral itself, you see spirits whipping around these bluish, electrified, ghostly shapes, and also the golden hearts of living people, which you don't normally see in the ghost field, but uh, it's the same golden light that is coming from Miss Cadaby's bag. And several of the people throughout the cathedral are dotted with these golden lights all around their hearts. And you see them all going dark and turning off as if whatever ritual or magic was affecting them goes away. Uh, and it only takes a few seconds to realize, oh, wait, like shit is going down up there. These ghosts aren't just like flying around in the cathedral. <clears throat> their erratic movements and the way that they're jerking around and, and their postures, you can tell that they're attacking people up there these spirits are actually like assaulting people inside the cathedral space upstairs huh. uh, and you as you survey the room all the pillars around the outside of the room those those square shapes that interrupt the flow of the water like uh, this one here they they're bricked over in the front but beyond that, you see in the ghost field, the fluid that you're attuning to runs in channels through those, behind those pillars, around these sarcophagus-sized uh, stone slabs that are upright inside the, those pillars. That look, they look exactly like the one that, that Dumbbell was trying to get Careless to, to crawl into. <clears throat> and e each of these pillars around the room has one of these sarcophagi stood up inside of it with something inside that you can't quite can't quite see the yeah I, right <laughs> uh, so the one it, in front of us on the ground that aldo threw is like empty it's empty yeah but it's, the ones that are standing up have something inside they do yes is it like candy or something yeah good, it, it's money <laughs> and candy and like puppies Okay, good. <laughs> uh, great, it's great. Um, no, you see, you see all that in a flash. It only takes a second to sort of turn your head around the room and see what's going on. Everyone else, uh, every, you're aware of this too, Rune. But everyone else, you also see the complication here is you you draw the attention of the of the ooze. <laughs> so you as Rune uses her power and like gets the lay of the land, you see one of these tentacles, it, it was going for a corpse a few feet away from her, and the tentacle bends and twists and shoots towards Rune's ankle uh, to wrap around it and drag her off her feet. What do you want to do? And you, you, you can react to this too, Rune. You're not like unaware, but... Can I resist? Do, can I do a resist on a not desperate you roll? Can. You can actually, yeah. You can make a prowess resist to like and I get a bonus <laughs> iron will. Uh, one stress. One stress, nice. So yeah, how how do you avoid it? Do you avoid it by by force of whisper uh, will, or do you like? Yeah, like get, a ward. Yeah, is that is that what it is? You like? Yeah. Yeah. Because so I'm it, like already mid a tune, and as it like kind of starts directing itself toward me, I can like kind of direct the energy to perform a little bit of a shield to redirect it away from me. Cool, cool. Yeah, okay, so everyone sees that before you can react. It starts to go for rune, and then there's there's a, there's like an electrical uh, interference. Sparks fly, and the, the tentacle snaps backwards, and contents it, it wraps around the corpse and drags the corpse away instead. Uh, Zeke, you're, you're wrecking, Aldo's wrecking this, this portcullis thing, right? Yep. Let's, I'll move you over there. You and you in the night. So, uh, take a bonus die. Okay. From the night and your effect is already like, uh, let's see. It would be, it'd be zero for a normal human limited for you. Plus the night standard. 
Uh, yeah, so it's uh, controlled standard and, and take a bonus die. Let's see if you guys yep. can get this thing open or if it's going to take some time. Uh, the effect is not changed by the not to be trifled with or whatever? It is, yeah. It, for a normal human, it would be zero effect to do this. Okay, so then it's limited and then with the, with the knight's help, it's con uh, standard. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. More five. It's it's still a it's still a success, but with it's a complication. Just, yeah, the complication is time. So you you get right. over there. You you and the knight put your backs into it, and the the handle of the portcullis, the metal handle, you you bend and snap it off, and it falls to the floor. Like, okay, all right, we gotta. Well, I, then I look to the knight that's standing there, and I I just I. Uh, is there is there before I do that? I'm sorry. Is there room for another knight to come help? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I look to the other knight and I wave him over. Yeah, it that it it barely turns its like armored faceplate head. It, it turns slightly towards careless when you give it an order, uh, to, for like confirmation. Yeah, and then I then I don't look at him. Get your fucking <laughs> ass over here right now. <laughs> Carlos gives a nod, like a bemused nod. He's just, he just has a sword on his shoulder and is just kind of like watching the whole room. Okay. Yeah, when you when you give the nod, although it's hard to tell, you're not sure if your second uh, intimidation or Carlos's nod was what did it, but the knight comes over and it, it grabs the bottom of the portcullis, like squats down and starts to try to heave it upward. Um, and the two of you can get on the portcullis bars and try to push while the other knight is like still t pulling on the wheel. And you, you raise it, you know, half an inch, almost an inch, and it's straining. It's clear that there's some mechanism that's been built to keep it shut, uh, and you're just breaking that mechanism, more <laughs> or less, uh, by, by jamming it up through the, through the ceiling. But it's not, it's not open yet. But you will eventually open it. Uh, so let me make a fortune roll one moment. Let's see. This takes a little extra time, so... Five, okay. So you get it two inches up from the bottom of the floor. Um, the tentacles have, unless someone intends to be interfering with this, the tentacles are clearing the, the floor of corpses one by one or three by three as they reach out and, and haul these. There were like 14 of them, I think, that these dead cultists being dragged into the ooze. Uh, one of the pillars, one of the stone pillars in the room, this, this, this big pillar here, um, it, the, one of its faces cracks, the bricks separate, kind of like when Miss Cadaby found the heart inside the pillar, uh, the, the facing, the plaster that's on the front of the bricks cracks, one of the bricks shifts and falls out <clears throat> and you see the the carved face of a sarcophagus inside there and it's it shifts slightly and the pillar trembles inside it you hear this low rumbling noise coming from inside the pillar way outside down the hallway you guys came from the canal docks under the cathedral and passed through a couple portcullis gates attended by cultists on the way here you hear a uh, whooshing noise of wind like <clears throat> a storm blowing down the various passageways of the catacombs that you passed through before. Cold wind goes blowing past you, Aldo. Uh, you have to, like, grip your glasses real quick to keep it from flying off your face. This storm-level wind is whipping through the catacombs. It makes this terrible, terrible sound. <clears throat> um, and two cultists come running, probably the two that were on portcullis duty further up the, the uh, tunnel, they come running down. They're completely different now. Like, their hoods are back. They aren't acting the way they were before. They're clear-eyed and, like, they don't seem like weird cultists. They seem like normal people. Uh, and one of them comes running up to the, to the bars right in front of you, Aldo. And when he sees that you're there, uh, he has a lantern, by the way, sorry. He's holding a lantern. Um, he, the lantern light plays on your face, and he stops, and he grabs the bar. And it starts to sort of frost over as the wind is howling past him. And he's like, what? It's you. Oh, my God. 
you have to ah, ah, and he looks back down the corridor and something picks him up and drags him out of sight uh some invisible force uh spirit obviously like crackles in the air and, and tears him away and he lets go of the portcullis and goes flying back into the hallway <laughs> Who's, who, what, what? <laughs> I think as that happens, like uh, Carolus will like light a lantern and set it on the floor, and he sheaths his sword and pulls off the spirit killing spear. <laughs> it says, "It's just never a dull moment, is it? We're gonna have some fun." Um, I'm so just cranking. You're still yeah. trying to get the door open. <laughs> John, I have a couple questions about the heart um, that I have. Yeah. If I notice that the light's going out, like you, you mentioned that it's going to sort of a, a, a dormant or an inactive state. Like, am I worried that this artifact is suddenly potentially going to be worthless or do I not know? Uh, uh, you might know. Yeah. You've, you've cer certainly like done a fair amount of investigation about these things, right? Uh, about the artifacts for sure, yeah. About the artifacts, yeah. Give me a, give yeah. me a stuff roll. I think, I think this is the kind of stuff that you could certainly know quite well. Okay. Uh, just like a controlled standard, like just like a general... Um... Actually, no, it's, I think it should be great effect for you. Sorry, Marcus. Okay. You're special when it comes to artifacts. Five, yeah. Dude. I have um, not landed a single six all session. Great. <laughs> so yeah, you you don't think that it is going to become useless, but you think that it, re it you know uh, from your from your understandings um, about the artifacts that it it requires a ritual of some kind to get the to make the thing do whatever it does, mm -hmm. and that when you took it out of the thing, you you feel like okay, I. I stopped whatever ritual had been done to start it before. And so if I want to use it again, I'll have to do the ritual again to got it to make it. Okay. Go. Okay. All yeah. right. That helps. Uh, that helps a lot to understand like what I'm doing or if I'm worried about this thing. So, yeah. Um, now, so do I, I should say even on a five, you don't know exactly what it will do with a five, but you, you get the strong sense that you could put it back right now if you wanted. And it's not, it's not, completely turned off if you wanted to hang it back in the pillar you could and it would go back to doing whatever it was doing but you don't really know what that was so <laughs> uh yeah sorry <laughs> uh yeah i'll hold on to it for now okay so if you if you just hold on to it in the next couple seconds it'll finally just completely turn off okay and stop stop its power mm. Is anyone doing anything immediately? The the portcullis is not quite high enough to crawl under yet. And the hallway is like getting rhymed over with frost on the bricks beyond you can see. Um, does anyone have a light source, by the way? Or is it just the last bit of light from Caterpie's well, back? Well, like you said, we could retcon a little bit. So, I mean, yeah. I just lantern. Yeah, who, any, anybody who wants to mark a lantern can have one. Just, just yeah. take it off. Right. Just to put a lantern on the floor. I'm backing up towards uh, the operation to open the, the gate, by the way, and I'm looking outwards towards the room where the tentacles okay. presumably are. Yeah, if you move over there, um, the knights will kind of, like, form a, a cordon around you like that. Okay. I think I do that, and then I kind of, uh, you know, uh, say to uh, Miss Cadaby and Rune, like, Rune, Miss Cadaby, we probably should be over here. We're going to be leaving soon. I mean, they're already kind of there, but I just mean, like, you know, inside the cordon. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but we've got sarcophagi filled with something in front of us. We've got a frost spirit of some kind killing cultists outside, and we've got ghosts upstairs attacking human beings. <clears throat> so if we could get going rather quickly, I would be very happy. <laughs> you want, and you see, you see all the like hefting fucking veins like bursting out of his neck, and he just just looks back and just fucking gives her the dirtiest fucking look. Like, what the fuck do you think I'm doing? 
<laughs> I like, <laughs> like pretend like I don't see him and I'm like looking at my nails. Like <laughs> Careless like looks at the exchange and just kind of gives a wink like <laughs> oh, okay. So if no one takes immediate action, I, I don't know that you necessarily can exactly, but John, uh uh can I can I put the ne- necklace on? The necklace? Yeah. Right? Isn't that what I pulled off the Oh, Dunville's thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's I mean, I guess it's sort of a necklace. Like it's like a flavor flave clock sized uh item but but it's 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 made to be worn he was wearing it wrapped with gauze on on his chest under his shirt under his clothes uh you so can, i need a chain to really make it to flavor flav if you really want to get really artifact flavor. watch okay yeah yeah but okay. uh you you know enough to know like just seeing it go, you know gauzed to his to his chest like that uh you know that Skin contact is what the thing must require. So if you're if you're touching it, um, then presumably you can do whatever, use it to do whatever it does. Um, and you have a good idea of what it might do because he tr- tried several times to force Careless Firm to, to, he like gave him commands and expected him to obey them when he was using the artifact. Right. Um, okay. Okay, so... Everyone moves back in the cordon, although you crank the thing up enough that the knight sticks his armored uh, arm, forearm, under it like a, like a car jack, kind of. Mm-hmm. Just jams it in there, and the, the metal of the armor groans under the weight, and le- it lets you kind of like readjust a little bit. He holds it briefly for you. <clears throat> so you, just, you can start getting it again. The cultist from outside, you hear him wailing, and you hear this cracking noise as a body gets slammed against stones and he comes sliding along the floor out in front of the thing out in front of the portcullis uh with wind whipping his robes everywhere and he's bent at a weird angle gasping in front of you and he he rolls over and tries to crawl towards the um towards the opening to like try to pull himself under where right like right in front of you although um and the wind goes to a crescendo, and he gets lifted and slammed against the ceiling of the tunnel, and then smashed back down to the floor again and dragged off further into the dark. On second thought, maybe we should stay inside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you basically have to yell that at this point, Rune. It, like, the wind app noise is getting super loud out in the corridor, and it's getting colder and colder and colder. You're I'm, getting... And I'm and I'm I'm struggling with the door, and I go, "Well, have you found another exit?" Uh, <laughs> just kind of like look around at this like dark room filled with tentacles. <laughs> nope. <laughs> uh, yeah, you 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 look around, and there you you don't know any other exit. You do know that there's some kind of ventilation in the up in the dark vaults of the ceiling to like help right. air circulate down here. Um, but at, as you look around, you see the first of the changed corpses crawling up out of the oil. Oh, good. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> as, Car- as Carlos kind of sees the, the shadow of that in the, in the fringe, he like looks back and says, now, now listen, he's like yelling over the wind. I've been doing a lot of reading. <laughs> as I understand it, the greater the challenge, the more we know of ourselves. <laughs> it's an amazing opportunity. You just have to look at it that way. <laughs> um, so there's two on either side there above and below you they, they, they come crawling up out of the oil and they, they look like they did before their cultist robes uh, and masks and are, are glued down to them with this black tar like substance um, and they're crawling out of it their, their legs don't seem to work quite right they're sort of dragging their legs behind them as if it was a, a, like a mermaid's tail <clears throat> and ropey black oil is dripping off their limbs. Um, and they begin crawling towards the group. Uh, the knights the knights turn, raise their shields, and like form a, a wall as much as they can. Um, I think they even step forward a little bit to like, you know, hold, uh, hold them off a little better. Miss Cataby, if you could put 
one of those special rounds into one of them as a bit of an experiment. I think that'll drop one of the Death Stranding zombie knockoffs that we're dealing with right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Uh, ever <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, 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 I like it. And now this. Jesus. I like <laughs> it. You know how it is, Jeff. Uh, I pull out I pull out my pistol so far. Closest one. Nice. So uh, we've talked about this before, Marcus. There, there was a time where you were interested in using study to to attack with. Yeah. Um, and I was like, ah, you're in combat. Like, you know, that's going to expose you to danger by by standing there and being very meticulous about it. You should probably use hunt. Right. This is one of those cases. If you want it, it makes total sense for you to calmly and carefully study the right thing to shoot. You're not being attacked. You're not in any danger right now. So I think that would be totally fine if you if you wanted to use study here. This would be the time. Uh, that is uh, a great educational point to be made. <laughs> However, I put so much fucking XP into hunt, and I got three die. I'm gonna go hunt. Right. <laughs> hunt those bastards down. I'm gonna hunt it. I'm a sharp snarp sh- shooter. Snarp. <laughs> <shooter. laughs> you know what I was trying to say. Do you care about which one you're shooting, or is just any of them is fine? Um, any of them. It's oh. experiment to decide right now, John. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. So you you load up. Did, did you bring a rifle on this job or are you using your pistols? Um, I did, but I have my pistols. Are you gonna, you're going to test with the pistols first. I yes. have a, a okay. YouTube fuckery to do after this, by the way, as well, John, before we go into our first break. Uh, okay, cool. Okay. Uh, so just standard? Um, yeah, so this it's controlled and it is using electroplasmic ammo. It's limited. Uh, oh, sorry, standard effect. Yes, sorry. Okay. Standard. Yes. Yay. Ooh, nice. Good so job. we'll Six. mark, let's see where you are. There's Caterby. Uh, I'll say you shot that one. Uh, you probably want a closer one if you're really picking. Uh, right. So the purple one there, you nail it perfectly with the, the round, and it goes glink into the black ooze. It, it, it disappears inside it, uh, and some of the oil splatters onto the ground and then you see this faint glow from its mouth hanging open and its eye where its eyes should be that are covered in the oil as from inside it this faint electroplasmic blue glow of the round detonating and sparks come out of its eyes and mouth and it, its head wetly smacks down onto the ground and its arms spasm and it it rolls around and is it's not incapacitated fully but it's obviously damaged by this by this attack and is um, not advancing towards you. I think after all this happens, uh, a very excited and happy Academy like turns around with a smile on her face and she's like, am I a scientist now? (laughs) In the most dangerous lab in the world. Uh, Carolus, did you want to follow up on that? move? Yeah, I think. uh, after witnessing the round go off and just seeing that they're surrounded by on all sides by a tough situation, careless kind of closes his eyes and once again attempts to communicate with uh, she who slays in the dark. Says a little prayer. Says a little prayer. Just a little one. Cute. Uh, all right. And uh, we, we will resolve that when we come back. All right. So it's basically Jeff's fault for this break. So, <laughs> yeah, there you have it. Uh, all right, we'll be back. We're going to take a quick break, and uh, we'll see if Jeff, like, just turns into red mist after this one. So, <laughs> don't go away. More Blades after this. <laughs> 